Testing, testing one, two, testing one, two, three, four. What? Wait. Oh, I can go now. Okay. Hopefully, I, was, I thought about waiting until I was on the other side of this bridge before I started recording, but I just needed to record now. It's been years. I think almost three, if not three years since I've uploaded a video on this channel. And there's a long story behind that. An incredibly long story. And uh, it's going to be it's gonna be a hard story for me to get through. And hopefully you can hear me over the wind and cars. I'm going to walk somewhere and get relaxing going to the big lake over here. I'm just going to walk around the sun. Clear my mind. Clear my thoughts. Clear my heart. Clear my soul. Clear my emotions. Clear everything. Like your search history. Clear it all. <laughs> uh, you know. You never fail to make me happy. Well, I don't even know where to begin, but this is a new beginning. It's a new beginning in my life. And hopefully, things get better from here. They probably will. Probably. And, man, I don't even know how to begin this. I, uh, if those who have been on my channel, all like 32 subscribers I have, or 34 or 5 now, some of those are just me on an alternate account. So, I don't know, 30 something subscribers. Surprised if anyone's still sticking around after my three year absence. And I doubt I've gotten any new subscribers other than myself. But I just want to say, if you guys are sticking around and you're still watching, thank you for being there. But if you all know my channel, you know what? about my friend Kate, ex-girlfriend, the recent type of state friend that we broke up. You know about her. That's who this video is about. Not really about her, but more like what's going on with us. Why she's not really going to be around for me. If y'all were paying attention, I don't even remember if I mentioned it in videos or not. I don't remember, but... About almost three years ago, when I... I left. I moved to Tennessee to be closer to her. But as you can tell, I'm back in Oklahoma now. That's because she wasn't the type of person I thought she was. I don't know. I, I don't know. Things got pretty bad, and I don't even know where to begin. Things were okay when we were just texting, and we weren't calling. Then, when we first started calling, things were alright. And then we broke up, but decided to stay friends, and things were... Okay, they had their moments where they were kind of bad, but it never got too bad. Until not long after I turned 18, I think, is when it started to get real bad. I think. But, you know, we still had some good moments. Then, my house back in Dell City burned, and we had to move to the village, which is where I'm at now. And, uh... Things didn't quite get better or worse. They kind of stayed the same for the most part. And then when I finally moved out on my own, away from my parents, things got a little better at first. Then things got worse. And I thought every step of the way, like every time I reached that next step, things would start getting better. That's what I was hoping. That's what I thought. But no, as soon as I finally moved down there, or over there, I should say, to Tennessee to be with her, to start a better life than the life I had here. 
it didn't work out though. It, it just kept getting progressively worse. First, I found a. It took me a while to find a job and a place to live on my own down there. And I had to stay in a motel, and that was bad. She treated me. She, she just kept. As time went on, she kept progressively treating me worse and worse. And then saying it was my fault for why I was being treated this way. And it's like... Whatever. I moved into my own place out of the motel. And I thought things would get better. And they kind of were at first. And then they got worse. And then finally, after some time, we moved in together. Like we initially planned when I... All these years, we moved in together as roommates. And I thought, things are going to get better. And it was a rocky start, but then things started to get a little better. And then it started to get bad again. And then it got as worse as it could possibly get. The abuse was already bad. Verbal, just verbal, breaking me down, making me feel bad about myself. And it was a little physical back in the motel, but it was not so bad. It was random, like every once in a while. But right before I decided to move back, things got as worse as they could possibly get. She got physically abusive, and she even... She even said... She doesn't care about me anymore. She stopped caring. So now all she wants to do is hear me cry in pain. She wants to hear me suffer. And she said, you ain't going nowhere till you pay that debt you owe me. I don't even try escaping because I can find you no matter where you go. At that point, that was the final straw. Like physically assaulting me. Hard. She says that wasn't her being hard, but that hurt. If that was her going soft, I don't want to see hard. If she's hitting me and saying she doesn't care about me. That, that, that was the final straw. I finally spoke up about the abuse that she was doing to me. And some of my new friends from over there helped me get out of there. My friend Kendall, KB Combat Fire here on YouTube. I don't even know if he's still doing YouTube. I don't know if he's still making content or not. But if y'all know him, you know him. He was in a few of my old videos. I told him what was going on. and I said I wanted to get away from her, but I didn't want to come back to Oklahoma. And he was like... Nah, bro, come back to Oklahoma. This is your home. Over there is not your home. They got rid of the benches? Dang. That sucks. I gotta sit on rock now. KB Combat Fire said, come home. That's where you're meant to be. And I was like, yeah. The whole reason why I left home in the first place was to get away from a toxic situation with my mom and stepdad fighting all the time and then both of them using me like their own personal piggy bank. Money vampires, as I called them. Sucking me dry, saying I owe them money back for them helping. When sometimes they just helped for no reason. I didn't ask for help. And I, sometimes I didn't even need the help. And then they just bought me food and said, all right, now you gotta pay us back later for that because we did it. It's like, we didn't ask you, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I left to get away from that, just to land in a more toxic situation. So, I'm back, and I'm currently staying with my parents now, but it's temporary. I want to find my own place to stay, hopefully within the next two months, or less. At minimum two months, at most a year, but I really hope it's not a year. <sighs> hopefully it's sooner. I'm gonna get my job at Homeland back, but that may just be temporary. Because I gotta start at nine bucks an hour, which is a downgrade compared to my Tuckco job back in Tennessee. Fifteen bucks an hour. Man, those are some good hours. Good pay. And apparently that was crappy pay compared to what other factories pay. 
decent pay for factory work, the type of job I was doing was like $17 to $18 an hour, but Tucco was cheap. They were, only, they were paying like only 16 bucks at maximum. And that was way better than what I'm currently about to get paid at Homeland. So if they're the crappy ones and they're still like great, it's like wow. So yeah, uh, I'll come back to Homeland, but I'll probably find something else. Now that I have experience in manufacturing, I could find another manufacturing job. Hopefully there's one within walking distance. I need to work on getting my license. I have so much stuff I need to do to get my life in order. To be fully independent. I got, a lot, I got my work cut out for me, basically. I wanted my escape to be gradual. So that way I could uh, you know, adjust as I go and be more ready. But the universe had other plans for me, I guess. God had other plans for me. I was supposed to get out of there right then and there. So that's what happened. My, my friend Linda, who I told what was going on, told my coworker and friend from church, Vicky, that what, was Caitlin, what Caitlin was doing to me. And she got me out of there that day. I, I, I left work early, and at the same day I also quit. But I didn't quit. They basically quit for me because they told the people in the office, and, and they understood. They, they knew I needed to get away from Caitlin. So, and they also knew that was going to be my last day at work there. So, <laughs> I'm going to miss some of those people. Uh, but that's not here nor there. Point is, they got me out of there that day. We had to quickly go back to my trailer and rush, pack my stuff before they got off work. And there was so much more that needed to be done, and we managed to barely get it all done in one day, roughly. And I haven't seen her since. Like, I haven't seen her in person since that last time I saw her at work going to lunch with a new boyfriend. Oh, not not Nolan's break. She was going to break and coming back from break with her new boyfriend. Thomas. He seems like a pretty chill, cool guy. I hope she doesn't start doing to him what she did to me. And also, I hope he's actually cool and not secretly like her. I just can't believe I wasted eight years of my life. I started this YouTube channel, started recording videos, while I was talking to her. She was here for the beginning of my channel, and now she's not here. It's going to be a big change. I can't believe it. Man. I can't believe this is happening. This is all happening so fast. It hasn't even been a week since... I left. Well, I just got here today, but it hasn't even been a week since I left that trailer and left her behind. Everyone told me to block her, and not to contact her again, and all this and that. But I had to give my final goodbye. And God wants us to forgive, so as much as she's hurt me over these years. I just need to tell her I forgive her and goodbye. And this, this isn't working out. I ended up getting her evicted because the landlord didn't like that she was doing that to me. So that's... Yeah. I guess that's her karma. I hope she finds a permanent place in this hotel. Despite everything she's done, I still deep down care because can't just know someone for eight years and be there with someone for eight years and just not care. I really, really hope things would work out, but they weren't. They were just getting worse and worse. Oh my god. 
So I sent my final goodbye in the form of a voice message, and she started sending some back. And she was, she said, this isn't some kind of manipulation attempt to get you to come back. No, I think it's good we're both splitting from each other. We both need space and time apart to grow as people and maybe come back at some point to try again. And maybe we could periodically talk to each other, like randomly say hi sometimes. And maybe send each other videos or memes. Kind of like we did back before we got together. And I said, yeah, that works. That works fine. But that, 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 that was a neat, that was a good, a good way to end it off. It seems like we both left with an understanding. Maybe, maybe she wasn't just an evil bitch who just started saying she didn't care about me and started beating me. Maybe she was just mad and didn't actually mean it, because that's what she said in the voice message. She said she was only saying it out of anger and she didn't mean it. I, was, I wanted to believe that was true. But even if that was true and I believed it, I still didn't want to go back with her. I'm not letting this happen again. I'm not trusting nobody or anyone. Not like that ever again. I learned quite a few lessons from this eight year experience. But oh, I'll get to those later. Right now I just want to say, she seemed genuine. And that's what I was hoping. I was hoping that her messages are true. But, we checked my bank statements before you know, I left and before we got... There was a multiple parts to this plan to get me out of there. I mean, one of them was getting you know, my card canceled because she had it. And while we were there, we got bank statements to see if she was using my money. Even though she said she wasn't. She told me, here's what she told me. She told me that I'm keeping your card because you're irresponsible with your money. It's for your own good, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to use your card. I got my own money. And if I ever do use your card, I'll tell you about it and pay you back. I'll make sure to pay you back. And when she did use my card, it was for something small like a snack. So it's only like a couple dollars or something. Easy to pay back. That's not what the bank statement says. She was giving, she was giving my money to herself, putting it into a cash app card and forwarding it to her own account, taking huge amounts of money out of the ATMs at some points. And she had a, she had an Amazon thing. She had Google Answer, I don't even know what that is. And she even had YouTube Premium using my card. Which is fucked up. I couldn't afford YouTube Premium, or at least so I thought. I said I didn't I couldn't afford it. And she made fun of me for being poor. And that I still have to deal with ads. She made fun of me for that. Yet Apparently, I was making enough to afford it because you were using my card to pay for yours. You lied to me, Caitlin. So now, I don't know. I haven't touched those messages. I was supposed to re-block her, but after those touching messages, I agreed to leave her unblocked, but we weren't ever going to get close like that ever again. But now that I know this, I don't know. Should I respond? Should I call her out for lying should I and this is making me wonder was she being genuine in those voice messages or is she just that good an actress if she if she is as good as if she is a manipulator and a liar and a narcissist like all the people helping me escape her said she was then why didn't she use that nice tone of hers to try to lure me back in like they said she would do Instead, she said I could go. It was better for us to go. Is it, was it the whole after we grow as people thing, we can try again later? Was that, was that her sly way of trying to get me back? She's just going to, you know, give me my space or some shit? Was that it? Or is she being genuine? Because after finding out she's, she's lied to me 
to my face about my card and using it for stuff, I don't know what to believe anymore. Should I call her out? Should I, should I call her out in a voice message? What else has she been lying about? Has our whole eight years of knowing each other been built off a lie? And the whole reason why, even after we broke up as a couple and stayed friends, I still wanted to move down there, it was to help her out, get her away from that terrible family of hers. Like, kind of like how she wanted to do for me. Except it was just her mom. She liked her dad and brother. Her dad and brother were the good ones. Because the mom is a bitch. She mistreats Caitlin all the time. She's mean to her dog. She has a puppy mill, which is illegal. And those dogs are in terrible, terrible living conditions. And they're suffering. She cheated on her husband and always taking his money to buy shit she doesn't need. And they framed it like she was the bad guy. And I was there for some of the interactions over the phone. I could hear but now that I see that she could lie to me about the card, and some of the people helping me escape said that they think Will, the dad, was the one in the wrong. Like, maybe she never cheated with Billy. She said she didn't. Maybe she never did. That's a possibility. And that he was the one cheating. And they said he screwed a lot of women around work. And it's, everyone knows, but I didn't know. I forget to keep that a secret. <laughs> so, has everything I've known been a lie? Has her, her dad, and her brother being the victims of that tyrant bitch all been a lie? Were all four of them bad people? Or is the mom really the victim here? No, she mistreats those poor dogs. And I heard her be mean to Caitlin on some occasions. So no, she's still bad. Are they all bad? I don't know. I just don't know anymore. I don't know what to believe. I'm just starting to think everything has been a lie. And this is... That hurts worse than actually having a good friendship at first. And then it starts to go sour. Saying that it was all fake from the beginning is... I I don't know, man. I don't know. I I don't know what to think. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to believe. uh, I don't know. I'm... I just don't know. I just needed to get this off my chest. And I still have more to say, but would be here for a while. Maybe this is stuff I should say to her. Call her out for her bull crap. But should I just not touch them? Should I just not touch it? And just... Should I block her? Like I was supposed to and said I would. And never speak to her, reach out to her ever again. Or should I go with what we planned on and we'd occasionally send each other a video every so often and maybe say hi? Or should I just call her out? What should I do? I honestly don't know. For now, I'm going to leave her unblocked. She hasn't reached out to me and spoken to me since that day we made that agreement. So... Maybe she is giving me my space, and like she said she would. I just can't believe I threw away eight years of my life over something that's possibly all just a lie. Everything she got onto me for and called me a sociopath, psychopath, narcissist, manipulator, gaslighter. I'm starting to see that she was projecting. She's all those things. what she did to me. Uh, I'm sorry. This has just been... This has basically been 25 minutes of an emotional breakdown after being gone for almost three years from this channel. But it's fine. Oh, the reason why I was gone is because she... That's another thing she did. She locked me out of my account and wouldn't give it back. 
maybe that's a story for another video. I'm not, I'm not pushing this any further. I'm going to try to record more often now. I'm going to go back to my usual recording schedule. Where whenever I have an idea or I just want to talk, I'll just start recording. Until then, thank God that I'm out of that horrible situation now. And I'll see you guys next time.